So in this video, I'm going to introduce what's called the reverse triangle inequality for two real numbers. And I'm going to show you how this inequality results from the main triangle inequality. So what I've got written here is the main triangle inequality, and it says that if you've got any two real numbers, x and y, then if you look at what the mod of x plus y is, it's always less than or equal to the mod of x plus the mod of y. The inequality that I've got written below, this is now what's called the reverse triangle inequality. And it says, again, that if you've got any two real numbers, x and y, this will always be true. That if you look at what the mod of x minus y this time is, it's always going to be greater than or equal to this thing, which is the mod of the mod of x minus the mod of y. And this result follows from this one, and I'm going to show you how in just a moment. Sometimes, in several proofs in real analysis, this is a very handy thing to know. With this, the proof follows very easily, whereas from the main triangle inequality, it's much more difficult. So it is a helpful result to know the reverse triangle inequality, that this inequality is always true, and that's why I'm introducing it to you. So let's now start trying to understand why the main triangle inequality being true implies that this reverse triangle inequality is always true. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm firstly going to show that this statement here, the reverse triangle inequality, is equivalent to these two statements. So I've put a biconditional there, which is a logical equivalent sign. Um, so these two statements here are that the mod of x minus y is greater than or equal to the mod of x minus the mod of y, and that the mod of x minus y is greater than or equal to the mod of y minus the mod of x. And the reason I want to show this equivalence is that if these two are logically equivalent, then if I show that the main triangle inequality implies both of these things, then because these two things are equivalent to this being true, this will therefore follow. Uh, and that's a sketch of my proof idea. I'm going to show that this implies both of these, and then what I'm now going to do is show that these two things are equivalent to this. So, this is a little bit complicated looking, in particular this side where we've got the modulus and then we've got more modulus inside the modulus. That's why it's simpler to break it down into these two separate statements. So let's firstly understand this forward arrow here, why this thing implies that both of these are true. So let's start with this one here. So you'll notice that this is actually the same inequality as we've got here, except that these modular signs have now gone. Now, I can conclude that this being true implies this is true because of the fact that this, the mod of x minus the mod of y, is always going to be less than or equal to the mod of the mod of x minus the mod of y. So look at this thing here. This is the same as what we've got here, except that you have no longer got the modulus signs there. So consider this value. This is either going to be a positive real number, in which case taking the modulus has no effect, so what we've got here is going to be equal to what we've got here, or if this is zero, Again, taking the modulus of zero has no effect, so this thing would be equal to this thing in that case. Or if this was a negative number, then taking the modulus would make it positive, i.e. would make it bigger. So in that case, this thing would be greater than this thing. Ergo, what we've got here, the modulus of the mod of x minus the mod of y, is always greater than or equal to the mod of x minus the mod of y. So now, all I need to do is... apply apply transitivity here. I know that this is greater than or equal to this, and I know that this is always greater than or equal to this, therefore I can conclude that this thing is greater than or equal to this thing, and that's that first line there. So hopefully that convinces you that if this is true, it implies that this first one is true. Now let's understand why it implies that this second one is true. We'll notice that what we've got here, we've still got the same left-hand side here, but what we've got on the right-hand side here is just the same as what we had on the right hand side here, but times minus one. And now you just have to think about this modulus here. If I multiply the inside by negative one, it'll swap these around, so we'll get the mod of y minus the mod of x. But actually, since I'm taking the modulus of this, it doesn't matter. You know, if you take the modulus of something, if you take the modulus of the negative of that thing, it's still the same thing. So, for example, consider 4. The modulus of 4 is 4, but also if you take minus 
1 times 4 and take its modulus, you'll get mod of minus 4, which is also 4. So taking minus of something inside a modulus sign doesn't overall change the answer you're going to get. So this thing is equal to this thing. And now I see that this inequality being true is equivalent to this being greater than or equal to this, and now I can apply the exact same argument as I did before to conclude that this implied this to get that this implies this. So again, this thing here can either be a positive number, in which case taking the modulus of it leaves it exactly the same, or it can be zero, in which case, again, the modulus of it is equal to it. Or if it's a negative number, then this will be less than the mod of it. Therefore, I can conclude that this thing is always less than or equal to this thing, and then again by transitivity, since this is greater than or equal to this, and this is greater than or equal to this, I can therefore conclude that this is greater than or equal to this, which is this statement here. So from this here, it implies that both of these two statements here are true. So that's the forward arrow of this logical equivalence. Now what we want to do is go backwards and and show that if these two things are true, it implies that this is true. And then we'll have established that the two statements are equivalent. So the reverse direction then now. So the reverse direction is very easy. So we're going to start with these two statements being true, that the mod of x minus y is greater than or equal to both the mod of x minus the mod of y and the mod of y minus the mod of x. Now, for simplicity, I'm going to just call this thing the mod of x minus the mod of y. I'm just going to call that a, that value, we'll call it a. And then, of course, the mod of y minus the mod of x, that's just minus of this thing here, so that's just minus a. So I've now got that this thing, the mod of x minus y, is both greater than or equal to a, and it's greater than or equal to minus a. And from that, I can conclude that it must be greater than or equal to the modulus of A. And of course, if I then substitute back in what A is, the modulus of A is just this thing. And that's exactly what I'm trying to conclude. So I just need to justify then to you that if I know that this thing is greater than or equal to A and it's greater than or equal to minus A, I can therefore conclude that it's greater than or equal to the modulus of A. And I'll just do that actually with a simple picture. So if you imagine the real line here, the really simple case would be that a is equal to zero, in which case minus a is also equal to zero, So, and the modulus of a is also equal to zero. So therefore, clearly you can conclude this thing is greater than the modulus of a, which is just a. Um, but think about the other cases where a isn't zero. Here, imagine this is the point a here. This is uh, a being a positive number. Then you'd have minus a here. Or if on the other hand, imagine that a is a negative number, then you'd have a down here, and then you'd have minus a, the mirror image point, up here, uh, as a positive number. In both cases, whether a is a positive number or a is a negative number, modulus of a is always up here in the positive part. If I know that this thing, mod of x minus y, is greater than or equal to both of them, in either case, in the case where a is greater than zero, as a positive number, then mod of x minus y is going to be somewhere up here. In the case where a is a negative number, because I know it's greater than or equal to both a and minus a, again, I can still conclude that mod of x minus y must be somewhere up here, i.e. always greater than or equal to mod of a. So that's just a sort of picture explanation as to why if I know that this thing is greater than or equal to a and greater than or equal to minus a, I can then conclude that it's greater than or equal to mod of a. So overall, if I have these two inequalities here, I can conclude that this thing, because it's greater than or equal to this, and it's greater than or equal to the minus of this, it must be greater than or equal to the modulus of it. So these two sides are equivalent. This statement is equivalent to these two statements. Now what we're going to do is show that from the main triangle inequality, we can derive that these two statements must always be true, and therefore because those two being true is equivalent to this being true, we can therefore infer that the reverse triangle inequality is always true. So getting this from the triangle inequality is now just a bit of a cute trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my x in this tr main triangle inequality be equal to x minus y, and then I'm just going to let y equal y. So this thing is this bit, and this thing is this bit. So now this thing needs to go here, which is what I've got here, and this remains here. 
So I can therefore conclude from the main triangle inequality that the mod of x minus y plus y is less than or equal to the mod of x minus y plus the mod of y. But of course now what I just do is acknowledge that this cancels with this, and I can therefore conclude that the mod of x is less than or equal to the mod of x minus y plus the mod of y, and then I just need to rearrange that. So I've just written that out. So this thing is equal just to the mod of x. So the mod of x is less than or equal to mod of x minus y plus the mod of y. And now I can turn that into this just by bringing this over to the other side and then just swapping, uh, you know, writing it in the other, the other way around. So this thing is now greater than or equal to mod of x minus the mod of y, which is exactly that statement here. And then to get this one, it's exactly the same trick. So this time I'm going to let y minus x take the place of my x, and I'll let x take the place of my y. So by the triangle inequality, I can therefore conclude that this is less than or equal to the mod of y minus x plus the mod of x. And then, of course, this is just equal to the mod of y. And then, of course, I use the fact that the mod of y minus x is the same thing as the mod of x minus y. And with a bit of rearrangement, this will become this. So I've replaced this with just mod of y because the minus x cancels with the plus x. So I can therefore conclude that mod of y is less than or equal to mod of y minus x plus mod of x. And then just rearranging that I, and swapping sides, I get that mod of y minus x is greater than or equal to mod of y minus the mod of x. And then I just acknowledge that mod of y minus x is the same as mod of x minus y. So I've then got mod of x minus y is greater than or equal to mod of y minus mod of x. And that's the second one of my statements. So from the fact that the main triangle inequality is true, I can get that these two inequalities hold true for any x and y are real numbers. And then as I've discussed already, we've already proved the backwards part of this arrow that these two things being true implies that this is true. So from this being true, I get that these two are true and I know that these two being true implies that this is true. Ergo, the reverse triangle inequality is true for any x and y are elements of the real numbers.